moving along. I got all the transmission stuff done, so that's out of the way. I still haven't welded the exhaust yet to put that back in, but I think I'm going to do that later. I just I want to have good momentum on the front of the engine while I'm thinking about it. So really all I'm doing is kind of like sweeping around and picking a thing. So like wiring harness, right? I pull that up, push it through the firewall, push these up here. Now I just got to go inside, clip it in the ECU, and then other than the last connection before we start it, it's done. Same thing like air conditioning. I'm going to head and wrap this around, hook it up, hook this one up. I got to tighten those down next. And then found out one of the reasons it probably doesn't work. <laughs> this is just sitting there. So hopefully I can steal that piece off of the other van. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but that might be all it takes is to, to seal it back up. Uh, yeah, and then everything on the shelf is in order, except for stuff that I used off of the other van, not mine, like trans cooler lines. Um, but the actual cooling hoop, do I think those attached to each other? Is that why they're up there? No, I didn't. So, yeah, really, a trans cooler lines will go over there with the dip, trans dipstick, the things that I took off the 2002 because they were convenient. And then same thing up here, I can basically go right down the line until everything's back in. It's looking like I might be able to start it tonight, but we'll see. If it's just close, I may wait one more day. I don't know. Getting really close. So I have everything from the radiator back buttoned up. So the power steering fluid cooler needs to go on. Uh, and then it's really just intercooler for the air side. So I think once that cooler's on, probably I need to find this vacuum on and figure that out. I think I can just cut it and uh, maybe I'll give it a little heat for my map gas if I need to, but jam it over to the end of that, and I'll be good. Um, yeah, I can probably pour fluids in this thing and see if it comes out the bottom. Generally, I just start throwing oil in it because you need oil. If that leaks, you're screwed anyway. Um, did I put the bolt in the pan? Yes, there's a bolt in the pan. Is it finger tight? Yes. <laughs> good thing I checked. Cheese. And rice. Now, this can dangle. That's, well, I don't want it to dangle. It's for the AC. If I don't plug that one in, uh, it won't try to spin the clutchy clutch. And then we won't burn the thing up while there's nothing in it. That's good. Up there somewhere. And I did figure out, so the blue connector, I believe, goes to the water sensor. It didn't quite reach. The other connector went to the the level sensor in the pan and it was really really tight to try to stretch that one down there but they are identical so uh, if i get codes for the two i guess i'll have to flip them but I, I think that's right i think the blue one goes up top it just uh it feels a little more natural that way yeah all this stuff's not all of it i need exhaust but i can work on the exhaust with fluid sitting in so like i said throw some oil in throw some coolant in next but not coolant what i'm gonna do is pour so i know i'll at least need a gallon i don't i think about concentrate with the fancy blue stuff and i don't want to get fancy blue stuff all over the ground one gallon uh, it doesn't say premix so i think it's concentrated please add water yes so 50 50 negative 34 positive 265 70 30 84 276 I'll have to look up how much uh, this thing actually holds, but generally if I know at least a gallon of each is going in, I'll pour in a $2 jug of distilled water and just see everything comes flying out. But I want to double check if this looks shut because it's up and down. And I remember closing that when I was draining it, so it should be good on that drain. Yeah, see if anything drips before we actually pour more coolant in. And then... Now I did brakes. Is that just the fluid super clean? Not anymore, not with my finger in there. Oh yeah, there's fluid in there. Shit, where'd my cap go? There's bolts. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like super nervous because I just really wanted to run. What's this? Oh, what do you go to? Free bolt. That looks like a, some kind of body bolt because of the taper. Oh well, I put in a pile of bolts that I don't know where to go. Which is okay because I used a lot of stuff out of van two. So everything that's bag engine side is over there. And this is the last bag is the stuff for the front clip. So once all this is bolted up, pour in fluids, fix the exhaust, try to manhandle the exhaust in there, and then I could possibly try starting it. But I'm really thinking it's gonna happen tonight for sure. Oh 
they're down to the wire, so everything's buttoned up. Uh, I put these on just to help keep crap from getting in there until I figure out what to do about the AC. Uh, and I topped off the power steering fluid. <coughs> I'll need to bleed that and put more in, I'm sure. And there's been a gallon of water here for a long time. There's oil in it. I'll have to look at my list and make sure I didn't miss anything. But, yeah, I think, I think I'm good to go other than the exhaust. There's a little bit of power steering fluid on the ground from when I overflowed it. Like, uh, I normally do so but it hasn't been any drips since so I think that's just from uh, filling the reservoir so yeah my other light died and this one's down to two bars so I'm gonna charge this up and knock out that exhaust repair see about getting that thing in there but I'm gonna go ahead and commit and pour a gallon of coolant in as well just to see if anything higher up leaks yeah so this is the G48 blue stuff it says it's for bmws and teslas so it must be good oh, it says mercedes on it too but uh oh on the back yeah so if you mix 50 50 it goes from negative 34 f to 265 and if you mix 70 30 it goes negative 84 to 276 we haven't hit negative 34 fahrenheit where i'm at in michigan but eh, we'll go more than 50 50. Um, when i looked it up it said coolant capacity of this engine is 2.6 something gallons, like 2.64 rings a bell. So I already put a gallon of water in. If I put a gallon of this in, I'll be 50-50. And then I just did the math for only putting antifreeze in from here on out, and it ends up at 37.8%. So, what is this again, 30? Yeah, 30-70. So not quite that 30-70. So it'll be towards that side. It'll be a lot lower than the 50-50 mix, and it'll be a lot... Uh, hotter and will boil as easily on the other side. I'm fine with that too. So it's just money. Uh, if it doesn't work, I mean, because the van blows up, I'll be won't be sad about the coolant cost. I'll be sad for many, many other reasons. Well, back to those moments where I feel dumb, right? Like you ever install your desk and it completely blocks your welder? <laughs> so I gotta. I mean, it's not bad. I'll just set this stuff off to the side, hopefully. Move the toe, let's get the welder out, and then it's a pain in the butt to get in here. I was able to clean up. There was a hole here. That's probably the one that I could smell because it's near the engine bay. Uh, but I really couldn't smell much after I did this really ghetto patch. So and it's not a good way to really get in there. So I'm just going to do my best to glob up this top edge because it'll make it better than it was and then just leave it. And I think eventually... I just have to look for an exhaust somewhere. I hope I can wiggle this thing in. I was originally going to put a sleeve back there to make it easier to get it over the rear axle, but I think if I just jack the front end up as high as I can, I'll be able to get it back in. If I can get it out, I can go in, right? So, this is, I mean, I'm not a good welder. I've said that many times in the past, but on the right is what I'm ending up with, and on the left is what I'm starting with. I'm just putting a giant ass bead over the half-assed fix I did so that it wasn't flopping around into the van all winter long. Uh, and I'm fine with that, right? If, if, a, if I was a professional and a customer saw that, I was like, dude, what the hell did you do? I'll be like, I don't know, here's your money back. But for my case, like this is gonna seal up probably 95% better than it did already, and I'm fine with that. Cool, yeah, my crappy welds done. I, I mean, Honestly, it didn't turn out that bad. Like for rusty material with someone that sucks at welding, I'll take it. But I was like, oh, I gotta pull this off because I have the other mount on the engine. Except that even though I've loosened the bolt on this, this thing is like rusted together. I don't think that's worth peeling off. It should be in the right spot because this stuff didn't leak and I've got a new seal that I didn't use before like a piece of shit. So I'm gonna pull this mount off the block before I slide this in and then Really, the last thing to do before starting it up is to make sure it has enough trans fluid in it that, uh, that it, you know, well, you guys know why. Well, I had my first SADS. <laughs> like, I really want to push and get this done tonight. It's only like 11, but, oh shit, I didn't even bring a flashlight. Either way, uh, I gotta have the trans mount out to get the exhaust in because the exhaust goes between the two and I don't think I can fish it up in like I have to push this over the axle first 
So, I mean, maybe you can go far enough back that I can snake that through, but I re I'll try, because I'm stupid, but I don't think it'll do it. Okay, that took entirely way too long, and I'm fucking over it. <laughs> that bracket that goes to the engine is about an inch too low, and I can't for the life of me get it to go any higher. So, like, it's lined up, it's in the right plane, it just needs to go straight up, and it doesn't do it. So, tighten the shit out of this clamp. Hopefully the exhaust doesn't tear my turbo in half or something crazy like that. But I did see a pin, well not a pinhole, more like a, uh, I don't know what size, like half of this size hole. Like that rivet there, about half that size in the flex section that I didn't notice before, probably from banging on it and it's super thin. So I think what I'm going to do is just leave it how it is now and say that's good enough because uh, really I just need to check the transmission fluid hook up the battery and I can see if it runs and if it runs I can tie things up and drive it tomorrow and just see what happens and then I'll figure out what to do about the exhaust but essentially I'll I'll be nice to get everything but that's expensive I want to make sure that uh, I'm not going to buy an exhaust for a van that I didn't do right and it's going to blow up again. So, as long as that crank sensor isn't bad, it shouldn't spin any more bearings. Yeah, I mean, with all the rubber hangers in place, I don't think it's going to put a ton of stress on that turbo. But I don't know. It's late, so I'm going to see it run. I double checked my checklist. I've got engine oil, I've got transmission fluid. It only took two quarts, so I think I didn't drain it. I don't remember, but it, there's fluid on the dipstick. Checking twice, so we're good. Hooked the positive up, I didn't hook the negative up. Horn is unplugged, good. There was so much water in the steering wheel that it was honking on its own when my friend Jeff borrowed it. Well, touched it and didn't freak out, so. A little sparks, that's normal. Okay, so the good news is nothing caught on fire. Uh, but the front fan is on all the time, and I don't know why. And something over here clicks. I don't know why it's clicking. Uh, don't really care. I cleared all the codes, and I'm going to try to start it. I think the fuel's primed enough. And we'll just see what happens. something. Uh, I don't see any fuel spraying out. I don't like that it's stalled, but we can see if it gave us any codes and uh, move on. Okay, I got a code for maximum rail pressure exceeded. I don't know if that would cause the engine to shut off or not. Uh, I don't know if that has to do with air in the lines or anything like that, so I think the best answer is to give it another start.
Hmm. Same thing. <sighs> Why? Why me? Okay. Um, one more try. This time, right after it starts up, I'm gonna give it a little bit of throttle and just see. Maybe there's like a big air pocket stuck on the end at the pressure sensor and it can't regulate right. I have no idea. Uh, I would hate to find out that my fuel rail, not the rail, but the control for that eight shit. It doesn't make any sense though. It should just work. does the same thing at least now uh i don't get any codes so allegedly most of the things are working right and i found a thing on the forums uh, some poor sap had his engine start and idle and then he says after five seconds it would die well five seconds in internet time could be any amount of time so who knows either way uh the consensus was that some better light here yeah like that so a sensor in the back right so there's back of the fuel rail front front of the fuel rail and apparently one of those deals with the fuel pressure on startup and then after a unknown anywhere from five to thirty seconds who knows amount of time uh, the other one takes over and that's when this thing dies. So my best guess is that one's working and one's not. I don't know if they're replaceable, if I just need to get a whole rail. It could just be wires. There could be a fucking roached wire. Oh, and that one's exposed, but it's not broken. Maybe it's a harness problem. No, like I had the harness in a box and I drug it all over the garage. I just don't know. I'm not going to deal with it now. It's going to be hard to fall asleep, even though I'm tired, because I'll be thinking about it. But I can always try to slack off at work and do a bunch of research or something.